Hey guys, Puppet Pete back today, and I watched a really neat video the other day. Brett Weiss, my buddy Brett, did a video where he picked out his four choices for the Mount Rushmore of games for the Intellivision. And I thought it was a really good list that he made out some of the games that, not necessarily that he liked the most necessarily, his absolute favorites, uh, but the ones that he thought were most influential on uh, Intellivision or most represented the system and people thought of when the game was mentioned in the modern day. Uh, there was a lot of things that he said that were really good points, but I had a lot of different opinions on some of the games as well. So um, I think that if you ask a lot of different people, everybody's going to come up with a different list. But I thought, you know, why not? I remember playing this back when I was a kid and I know a lot of the games have been really important to me and I believe have really been important for the development of the system and the reason that the system is still so well loved, uh, 40 what, 45 years later. So anyway, guys, without any further ado, let's take a look at my picks for the Mount Rushmore for the Intellivision. Papa Pete, Papa Pete, the old ass gamer. Pete, Papa Pete, the old ass gamer. If you haven't grown up by the age of 15, For all your television collecting needs, as well as homebrews from publishers like Electronite, Homebrew Inc., and Television Revolution, not to mention the 10 titles that Intellivision Collector has published themselves, as well as blah blah woof woof games, be sure to visit www.intellivisioncollector.com. So let's get to the first game right off. And this is a game that was developed uh, way back right at the very beginning. It was almost, it was developed actually the same time as the exec and the system itself was being prepared and getting ready for release. Uh, it wasn't one of the absolute first games released actually for the system, but it was one of the very first ones being, being developed actually uh, by David Rolfe. And you probably know by now what I'm talking about. And Brett had this one on his list for sure. And that's Major League Baseball. There's just so much about this game that's iconic. Uh, the licensing, the first licensed sports game, or uh, it was the start of games being licensed for professional sports by in television by Mattel. Uh, and this was probably the most well represented, uh, the most well known game, and certainly the most well advertised because they use this game a lot in the television's advertisements uh, to compare games to the Atari system which was already very very successful and they wanted to show the real realism of their system and no game showed it more showed it more clearly and got to more hearts and in America and Canada than frankly the game of baseball yeah football was there too hockey to a degree maybe more so up here but football and baseball is sort of between uh, between the two but I still believe that uh, Major League Baseball was uh, the big force when it came to sports games and Mattel really really wanted to drive home the fact that they are the absolute most realistic way to, uh, to play sports on any video game system so I really don't know how anybody could really leave Major League Baseball off the list did they make improvements to the game is it the absolute best baseball game ever at the time it was I mean it had the very first use of a sound clip with but you know it's still uh, yeah it's, it's just something else so this is truly I'm going to put right in the George Washington spot because this is what the true foundation of uh, the Mattel uh, promotional was, uh, was all about right here. Major League Baseball. Now, next up, I talked about how the exec was developed along with this. And, of course, that was by David Rolfe, right? Well, I got another David Rolfe game to add into this list because, again, the very foundation of Intellivision, it's what this system was built upon. It's a game that everybody remembers playing who had one back in the day. And everybody sort of blames as being the reason that it, the way it taught a whole bunch of 12 to 14 year old kids or even younger how to gamble. And that is David Rolfe's Las Vegas Poker and Blackjack. And you could say, oh, well, you know, that was the pack in title. It's one of the most uh, well sold or the most plentiful uh, games on the system, but every single person played this game for many, many years in the television come out. And it had just so many great features. I mean, you could play one player, you could play two player, and of course you had that shifty eye dealer. It was fantastic. The shifty eye dealer nowadays is still like an iconic figure. So, so where we're going with this one, I'm going to put this one right in the Thomas Jefferson spot on the uh, on Mount Rushmore because it was there at the very beginning. It uh, really did an incredible amount for the foundation. Again, just like baseball, maybe not as influential as baseball was. But it's still, it's a game that everybody played. Everybody really did like this game. Is it anybody's favorite? I don't think I've ever talked to anybody who said this was their favorite game. 
but every single person has an opinion about it and every per uh, single person has memories about it and like i said before it taught all us kids how to gamble back in the late 70s early 80s right so anyway love this game uh, and david rolf did a fantastic job on it too Next up in the, uh, I'll call the Teddy Roosevelt spot on the Mount Rushmore, I'm going to put a game, of course there's so many different networks, I kind of want to have a representation from across the different networks, not just all sports games or et cetera, et cetera. So this one I find uh, was a real, uh, another one of these foundation games that brought the system to light, was released right near the beginning, and that is Space Battle. I'm going to use the Action Network version on here just to sort of uh, tie into the fact that it was a very early game. And there's arguments there to be made that Astro Smash maybe remembered by more people, but those people all came to the system probably a little bit later than what Space uh, Battle was around. Hal Finney game, fantastic game. Uh, and it used the full scope of the, of the Intellivision controller. Uh, of course, the different buttons, whether it was deploying or returning the base or going into battle. And then of course you brought your radar screen up and you could choose between the different squadrons of enemies coming at you. Uh, it was really cool. It was really cool. And uh, you, everybody was sort of looking for a dogfighting type of space game like that at that time. Remember, this is a couple of years after Star Wars was out. I'm thinking Star Wars Arcade might have been out. People were looking for games like that, you know, where you're fighting and defending. And man, this was the absolute best game uh, ever on a home console at this point uh, for that type of genre. So... Yeah, I really think that this was the foundation of space titles that ended up creating the Space Network. And after you had the Space Network, then you got things like Astro Smash. Uh, fantastic title, don't get me wrong. But I still think this is the one, historically, that goes on Mount Rushmore right here. If you're looking at a, a space-type game. Love Astro Smash. And, of course, that's always going to be arguably, how did you not put Sp uh, Astro Smash on that? Well, it wasn't around at the beginning, right? Not near the start. It came a little later on. Now, for a lot of people a little younger than myself, they may not remember when Astro Smash, before it was, uh, it, before it was a thing. Uh, and it's also a very simple game that doesn't really take advantage of all the different aspects of the, of the uh, Intellivision controller, right? So anyway, uh, this is my choice for the third one. Teddy Roosevelt is Space Battle. Last but not least, we got the Abraham Lincoln spot, which uh, Lincoln is sort of set off to the side, right? It's a little bit different. I, it, I look at that and I'm sort of taking it like it's a little bit different than the other three. The other three are together. Uh, history, uh, very foundation. I know Teddy Roosevelt was actually the newest one of the bunch, but uh, it, it just those three sort of go together. And this one is sort of set aside as a different thing. Lincoln was a different president. Sort of incredible the things that he did for the country. Uh, and I'm going to talk about a game on this Mount Rushmore list that, again, was very different than merely anything else, especially that I've talked to, but anything else in the system, really. And that's the very, very historical game, Utopia by Don Daglow. This is my fourth and final uh, game to put up on Mount Rushmore. It created the God game genre. It was so detailed, it was so cool when we got this game uh, that you could build the different structures, the houses, the, the crops. You, you tried to collect the rain, but you would have tropical storms, you'd have hurricanes, fishing boats, PT boats, there were so many. This game was so deep and so complex at the time. Although, uh, you know, may, we may not know exactly how complex it actually was under uh, behind the scenes. But it didn't matter because it just we, we got to really think and play this game. Play one player. You could always try to go for score. You could play two player when they're, they're both available. <laughs> as long as you didn't use a PT boat cheat. And uh, man, it's just historical and groundbreaking because this is the start of that entire God, uh, God game uh, genre. So uh, absolutely. Uh, Don Daglow's greatest creation, as far as I'm concerned. Um, really, really happy to have this one here. Hey man, yeah, to me, this 100% belongs up on the Mount Rushmore of Intellivision Games. Well guys, that's it. That's my Mount Rushmore of Intellivision Video Games. The four games that I will put up there. Major League Baseball, Las Vegas Poker and Blackjack, Space Battle, 
and Utopia. Man, groundbreak, uh, groundbreaking game from Don Daglo, right? Uh, anyway, I'm sure that you have different choices, maybe. Maybe you pick some of mine and some other ones. Uh, maybe. I actually only had one that's similar, Mike, uh, baseball, as Brett did. So everybody's going to have their own thoughts and reasons on that, and that's perfectly okay. Feel free to share your choices for Mount Rushmore of uh, television games in the comments down below. Make a response video, whatever you want to do. It's uh, it's always fun to see everybody's opinions, and uh, you know, because everybody has different reasons, and what's good for them may not be exactly what another person's thinking, and we just sort of have to understand that that's okay. But uh, anyways, thanks a lot for spending a little bit of time looking at these wonderful old and television games uh today don't forget to like comment subscribe because it really does help the channel and coco and i will see you in the next video you take care papa p papa p the old ass gamer p papa p the old ass gamer if you have Hey, I'm Brett Weiss, YouTuber and author of the 100 Greatest Console Video Games, 1977 through 1987. Yes, you are indeed watching Papa Pete, the old guy gamer. He's so old, in fact, he's almost as old as me. That's right. Whoa.